Yeah, let's, let's all give thanks for everything that we have. However, we're going to be talking about the Israelites. The Israelites at this time of the lesson was about to enter Canaan. God told Moses that later on, your people will start worshiping idols. And instead of thanking God, they started complaining. And let us remember that these Israelites at the moment is about 40 years old, the leaders. They were born in the wilderness, not in Egypt, but the leadership were more younger people, maybe 30, 40 years old. They forgot to thank God. Just like us, all of us are foreigners, came from the Philippines. First time we came here on America, we're so thankful that we can have cars, we can have televisions, black and white, colored at the time, not black and white, with uh, this distortion. You know, in fact, my wife was saying that they would watch TV that is black and white, very blurred, but they were so excited because they could hear the noise, the voice. <laughs> when we come to America, everything is given to us. It's free. And what happened now? We complained about the leadership. <laughs> we complained about the weather. It's so cold or it's so hot. Like what Brother Ely said, we should be thankful for all the things that we have. Not only the good things, but also the bad things. The good things will remind us that we're alive. The bad things will remind us that we're mortal. And we have God to look into. Just like the Israelites in our lesson, they forgot to thank God. But let me summarize what we have in your lesson. They forgot to thank God because they never turned their hearts. That means their hearts were not circumcised. There's no such thing as circumcision of the heart. But we're talking about the change of heart. How do you change your heart? Do you need a transplant? No. It is just an expression because the Greek at that time thought that the center, command center of our body is the heart. And that's the reason all these terms that I love you with all my heart, that's not true. We have Valentine's, it presents the heart. That's not true also. We love with our brain. We think with our brain. And before we speak, we think with our brain. Although some of us just speak without thinking. One special lesson is the miyet. It's pronounced as miyet. It gets, we read it as miyeten. Miyeten, miyeten. It says, oh, it is an idiomatic expression, the first part of our lesson. Most of the Israelites would use it, oh, God is good. Oh, we're going there. But it has something to do with who. Me means who. Yet, or yeten, is will give. It is similar, I was thinking of Tagalog word, that sana. Oh, it's Christmas time. But it means it's Christmas time. Who gave us the Christmas? Jesus oh, we're going to Disney. So, how could we go to Disney? Who would provide us in going to Disney? So it is an idiomatic thing about Yeten. Who will give us? Who will give us the freedom that we have? Who will give us the salvation that we have? Jesus Christ. In Tagalog, we can say, Oh, sana maligtas tayo. Sana magkita tayo sa langit. Actually, what it means is that how could we go to heaven and who is responsible for that? God said, seek me and find me. That's not enough. Seek me with all your heart and with all your soul. How can we do that? 
Thanksgiving last Thursday. How many of us summarize, enumerate the things that we could thank, be thankful? How many things that we were thankful that is more than the number of food, the kind of food that we ate? Salvation of Jesus food. Yeah? We think about the food that nourishes us, which is good, which is good. But we shall be thankful about God first, God. then our family, then our job, or maybe our friends first. God, family, friends, then whatever, job, positions. Did we do that? Probably most of us. The question is, do we do that with all our heart? Do we seek God with all our heart? And how are we going to do that? Coming to church once a week? Some of you twice a week, maybe three times because there's a prayer meeting. Is that what the lesson tells us? If you don't answer me, we'll finish in five minutes. <laughs> what do you think? There are different ways to be saved. God said, what, with all our hearts? And another one is repent. Let us discuss repent, repentance. How do we repent? If I heart Roy, what do I say? Oh, sorry, Vine. He's called Vine because he's a Visayan. If you were Tagalog, pare, sorry. Is that enough? If we say sorry, we admit to our fault. We tend to forget what I, I tend to forget what I did. But I just turn around and try to be nicer to you. Because I know I hurt your feeling. Instead of going to you and, Eli, I'm sorry I hurt you. I should have not said that. Instead of just, bite, sorry, uh, did I mean it? God wanted us to even say why we are sorry. That is part of the repentance. I should specify that I should not say bad words against you. I should have not said that. I'm sorry. Can we do that? Yes. Or we're doing that already? Are we? Yes. Okay. Do we feel it with all our heart? Okay, I'm not going to be asked because I'm one of you guilty as charged. <laughs> when we repent, we should always also convert. This is the tricky question. How do we convert? How can I show God that I repented? Is it enough to say, Lord, forgive us all our sins, da da da? Part of our lesson tells us about conversion. When you convert things, when you convert electricity from positive to negative, you change it. When you convert your direction, you change it. The Bible tells us, change, turn around. When you say turn around, it's going to be 180 degrees. Not 160. This is 360. This is 360. I'm going to turn around 360. I'm still facing you. If you happen to be sin, my sins, I'm still having enjoying my sins with you. The 180 is when I turn around from you, from pretend that you are all my sins. If I turn around from my sins, this is turn around. I don't have to look at you again. 
And if I'm going this way to continue sinning, if I turn around, I stop seeing sinning, and I don't have, I have a different way to go. And that is the God's way. Very interesting in the Torah, which is the book of the Bible used by the Jews. They have steps, similar to our lesson, steps of repenting, repenting. Number one is regret. This is the time when we say, I'm sorry, but you should feel it. You should feel it. How many times did, I tell, did we tell our spouse that we're sorry? We presume, I presume, I'm not saying, you're perfect, you're okay. I presume that Mary will always forgive me. Last Thursday, she was just telling me that, oh, Abe doesn't like to eat my food. I said, how do you say that? Because you never thank me. <laughs> okay. I'm glad she's not here. The reason I don't thank her or appreciate her cooking is because she would cook more if I tell her that this is good and I don't want her to gain weight so it's much better that she's not cooking anything but she loves to cook it is her therapy that she could cook and she would experience and she's a good cook and those of you who have tasted her cooking You'll agree with me. But I should be thanking her for what she did. The air we breathe is always there. Did we thank God for that? No. We have a lot of patients who would say, Hey, I was every day, Ash, you're, how are you? And I said, Every time I wake up in the morning, I thank God. Yeah. That means that's another day, another bonus of their life and there's one guy who will say how are you i said well it's a good day how do you know i read the paper every time every morning i read the paper look at the obituary if my name is not there it's a good day <laughs> <laughs> that's how thankful he is and what about us the steps of repentance is number one regret we should be sorry. Mm -hmm. We should identify why we're sorry. Mm -hmm. And then number two is confession. That is how we know that we have identified our fault. Mm -hmm. I don't confess to my wife that I love her cooking, but I should be telling her that. And that is the same thing with your spouses, with your friends. If you hurt them, you tell them because I, most of us would say it's easier to ask for forgiveness than permission but I know asking for forgiveness is difficult but you have to ask it. I have a f funny story about during the martial law uh, there was a rumor that the police are going to confiscate your firearms and they would go house to house and you go to jail so this guy was so scared and he told me you know i have a, a box of hand grenade would you be interested in it <laughs> and hand grenade cost about 100 pesos before and he's selling it that for 100 pesos about 12 of them like 10 pesos instead and i called my father and my father was so upset and hung up the bang the phone on me. <laughs> so I was in Cebu, he was in Bohol. The rest of the week, he would keep on telling my mom, Bantay lang nasa Abe. Abe should be careful. I'm going to spank him, whatever he was saying, enumerating it. So weekend came, I went home to Bohol. And the first thing I saw my dad, I said, and I, he asked me, why did you call? It might be bug. 
I apologize right away. I'm sorry, I should not be doing that. Can you forgive me? His next statement was, have you eaten? <laughs> so my mother was waiting for him to scold me or to hit me. So when I was gone, my mother asked him, oh, I thought you were going to beat Abe. I said, that guy has already asked for forgiveness. Are you crazy? <laughs> he was mad at my mother for asking that question. His point, my father's point was that he was already asked for forgiveness. And I would be stupid to be still mad at him because he already asked for forgiveness. Try that to the people that you offended and you'll be surprised that 100% will forgive you. We forgive you. So when we talk about about face, Teshaba means leaving sin. You leave the sin by turning away from it. Turning away. What is interesting is that being a sinner is in a dark place. Okay? In a dark place. Being a sinner also, we're wearing a dirty clothes. The white clothes we have is not white anymore. It's dirty because of the sin. We think that we don't have dirty clothes when we are in the dark place. But when we compare ourselves to the light, Jesus Christ, that is the time when we find how dirty, how sinner we are. And the closer we go, nearer the light, the more dirtier our clothes are. The closer we compare our lives to Jesus Christ, the more sinful we become. And to our judgment, we are not supposed to be safe. But there is a God that is more forgiving. He would forgive us before we have the sin. And that is the reason that the plan of salvation has been made, has been set up before he they created Adam and Eve. Amen. And that is also those of you who are cruising on the ship. There are lifeboats. It doesn't mean that the ship would sink. That's why they put the lifeboat. It means just in case the ship would sink, there is the lifeboat. Just in case these people that we made, this human being that we made, if they sin, the punishment is death. But there is the plan of salvation. Amen. Amen. And who paid for our sin? It's Jesus Christ. So once we turn away from sin, we don't have to go somewhere else. We have to look at the future. And what is our future? The future is heaven. Let us remember, two years ago, I talked about what we should do while waiting for Jesus' coming. Do you remember that? If you don't remember that, think. What would you do when you reach heaven? Huh? What? Thank God. We thank God. Of course, we thank God. Okay. Uh, our lesson tells us something about God about being accepted. However, one of the tests for repentance, how do you test your repentance? How often, often do you repent? Can you identify your sins? Or we just generalize, forgive us all our sins. Even if we cut somebody on the traffic, or we bump on somebody, or we curse somebody, because not really that they hear it, but we curse them because they did not do what they were they're supposed to do. It's up to you how to test yourself. 
Now, test your search for God. How often do we search God? Well, we just presume that we're Seventh-day Adventist Christians, that God is with us. Is God with us? Remember our lesson tells us about change of heart. Turn our hearts. Circumcise our hearts. That means let God be in our heart or in our mind to control us on our daily things. And that is the reason that when trouble comes, that is not the time to pick or to pray. The time to pray is when you wake up in the morning and ask God for guidance for the rest of the day. Not when we hit somebody in our car or somebody hit us in an accident. <clears throat> Then, in the evening, we thank God for everything that happened for that day. So, repentance, practice, practice, practice. We cannot be perfect without practicing. And in fact, there's a saying, Nike was saying that if you want to play, that means basketball, you practice. If you want to be a good champion in basketball, you practice harder. If we want to be a better Christian, we should practice Christianity. We should practice giving love to each other, not to our friends. I would like to conclude with David. David is more sinner than any one of us. On this particular time, Nathan the prophet just chastised David. He just committed adultery. Nobody commits adultery here. He just murdered his general, the wife, the husband of Bathsheba. Not really killed, but he put his general in front of the strongest arrow attacks from the enemies. So he died. Mm -hmm. And Nathan, the prophet, just tasted him. <clears throat> but if you open your Bible on Psalms 51, you don't have to read it, but just mark it. That is David's prayer after he was just tasted, that he was a sinner, he was a murderer, he was an adulterer. Let me read part of it. In verse 1, Psalms 51. Have mercy on me, Lord, O God, according to your unfailing love. That means, number one, David prayed for mercy. Can we do that? Number two, he acknowledged his transgression. On verse 3, he said, For I know my transgression and my sin is always before me that is very difficult to admit especially us that are perfect like seventh-day adventists perfect and number three be accountable to the one you have sinned against and david said against you you only have I sinned and done what is evil in your sight? David admitted to God that I am a sinner. And number four, ask God for a new heart. That's why on verse seven, he said, cleanse me with hyssop. You know what hyssop is? It's a kind of plant, medicinal plant, that can cure everything. It could be for arthritis, for abdominal pain, whatever. Now it is an oil that they sell it on a supplement, dark supplement. David asked God, cleanse me with his soap, and I will be clean. Wash me, and I will be whiter than snow. 
the difference between David and us is when David prayed, he prayed sincerely. Does he go perfect after that? No. He still commits sin. But when he prayed to God, he's so sincere that God forgives him. And that is the only secret that we have to acknowledge. We can pray sincerely and God will forgive us. Amen. In fact, let me repeat, when Jesus was asked, when Jesus was asked, what are the most important commandments, the greatest commandment? Same thing as we read in Deuteronomy chapter 4. It says, love God with all your heart and soul and all, your mind. and all your mind the bonus answer by Jesus was love your neighbors as thyself he was not asked that but it was just a bonus as an important of showing our love as a Christian if we have God in our hearts Amen. I thank you very much for being here and I thank you for your friendship. Thank you. And I thank for the good God that allow us good health just for a day to be together in this church. Amen. Shall we bow our heads for prayer? Our Father, we th only thank you for your goodness and for another day and for another opportunity that we could gather to worship you. Thank you, Lord, and prepare our hearts for the next service. In Jesus' name. We Amen. pray. Amen. Amen. Amen.